We're bringing our panel now, Tammy Bruce, a Fox News political contributor, also the Independent Women's Forum's voice uh, president, along as, as well as the Washington Times columnist, John Burnett, a New York GOP strategic advisor, also One Empire Group founder and CEO, Lawrence Jones, campus reform editor-in-chief, and Kevin Walling, a Democratic strategist and political director. Uh, Tammy, let me, let me start with you. Obviously, to Adam's point, very fast moving, out of left field, uh, everything was fast. The tweet... The reaction to the tweet, uh, the dismissal by, by Disney, and now the, the fallout from all of it. Yeah, obviously, I don't think anyone disagrees that what she tweeted was inexplicable and awful. I think what a, a big push part for uh, Roseanne was that Wanda Sykes, who is listed as a consulting producer, African-American comedian, very important to the show, key to the comedy, key to the structure. She, prior to this, she said, I'm leaving. I think that when the people you've surrounded yourself with uh, then abandon you, uh, that becomes a problem. The, the, uh, many have mentioned this as well. Look, this was Roseanne Barr's uh, mistake. Uh, hundreds of people will lose their jobs now. Uh, it was a very, very quick move uh, in this regard, but I think it also brings up a larger uh, cultural conversation. But you heard the, the Valerie Jarrett clip. They maybe want more of this. I was a little surprised she then praised Al Sharpton in the midst of this kind of a conversation. Um, but uh, do, should people be destroyed in this fashion? So many in, you know, jobs lost from hundreds of, of individuals. That's right. maybe a larger conversation. But, but I do think that in the world of social media, uh, and the nature of, you know, comedy, it, it also, her tweet wasn't funny. I don't know if he was thinking it was comedy, but the, uh, comedy is uh, uh, obviously something that's not easy. John? Look, we, we all know that comedians, they do go over the edge. That's what they've always done. However, this is way too far. Now, with respect to ABC's actions, it was quick decisive. That's what we expect from corporate America. When things do not align with, with their corporate values. How do you juxtapose that with what's going on at Starbucks today, closing down 8,000 stores uh, you know, over an incident that happened at one store? Uh, is, is, there, is, there, is that an overreaction uh, from their part? Whereas you think what Disney did was a smart, quick reaction? Well, the thing is, with respect to Starbucks, I think it's a first step. However, it's not an end-all, be-all. The training has to be continuous. And in fact, I would suggest Starbucks create focus groups. Let's hear from the customers, not just bring mm, in a consultant point, for two idea. hours to talk to your, to your people and then you know, get feedback from them and then everyone goes back to work. It needs to be a holistic plan. Well, as long as the baristas aren't uh, writing messages on cups and trying to teach me about the <laughs> race relations. Right. Hey, guys, here's, a, here's one of the things, though. Some people are saying, and you don't get a lot of folks saying that this was a wrong move, perhaps, by Disney or that uh, anyone trying to justify that tweet. But you are getting a lot of people saying, well, what about this sort of app being applied to liberals? Bill Maher using the N-word, uh, Joy Reid, uh, and, and what she, her thing, uh, but Joy Behar. And then even over the weekend, Michelle Wolf, the comedian who really hit the scene big time at the White House Correspondence Center sort of doubled down on uh, her attacks on Sheriff Huckabee. Let's listen to that for a moment. In fact, after Gina was nominated, my best friend Sarah Huckabee Sanders tweeted, <laughs> any Democrat who claims to support women's empowerment and our national security but opposes her nomination is a total hypocrite. Well, if anyone's an expert on hypocrites, it's Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> And for the record, that was not a looks-based joke. That was about her ugly personality. <laughs> she has the Mario Batali of personality. Lawrence Jones, uh, is there a moral equivalency or is that irrelevant right now? Well, she's not funny as well, but Charles, I, I've been going back and forth with people on Twitter about this. I'm not saying what the left does is right, but I hate when we on the right say, but what about, what, what does the left do? It's like when your parents uh, punish you for something and you say, my friend did that as well, so somehow it justifies it. Look, she has the right of a freedom of speech, but freedom of speech does not negate you from freedom of consequence. And so she's getting the repercussions of what a private business is doing. They're saying we're going to protect our interests, our brand, and we think that you have damaged our brand uh, by having your show. 
Um, look, I think conservatives jumped the gun when it came to Roseanne. We have this tendency to have these flavors of the month. Uh, she was a liberal, a socialist. Uh, that is what she advocated for the majority of her life. But somehow after she relaunched this show, she became this conservative darling. And I never understood why. We have to start evaluating people that uh, we, we start to look at as role models within our movement. Kevin, uh, you know, uh, Lawrence uh, making the point that private businesses are allowed to do what they want. Uh, and, and, of course, we, we've had this discussion whether it's the NFL and their new kneeling uh, right. policy and other things. Sure. But is there a sort of an inconsistency out there? Is there sort of a double standard, if you will, will a Bill Maher can use the N-word and be forgiven sure. uh, because of the notion that, well, he probably likes black people. There's some sort of assumption that it's okay for him to do that. Yeah, Charles, that's a great question. You know, my mom is the great barometer on all this. So well, when I called to talk to her about Roseanne, she said, you know, two wrongs don't make a right, which I think is the point that Lawrence was uh, making uh, just before I spoke, uh, in that we can condemn folks on both sides when they do something right. wrong. When Bill Mars used that kind of language, that disgusting language, you know, and, and he was rightly condemned by people on both sides of the political spectrum. What Roseanne did and said today, not just about uh, you know, Valerie Jarrett, but attacking, you know, uh, the Clinton family, attacking, uh, you know, being anti-Semitic, uh, it, it's beyond the pale. And again, we can condemn folks on both sides. But again, what ABC did today uh, was really important and an important first step to show that this is not a tolerant thing that can be supported. But you were okay with Bill Maher not being fired, though? Well, I think, you know, Bill Maher took some time off, uh, rightly so. I think, okay. you know, Joy Reid did the same thing. Uh, and again, we have to look at the circumstances. Right. Uh, as Lawrence rightly pointed out, you know, Roseanne has a long history of tweeting and saying awful things, as Bill Maher does, too, in terms of things that may go beyond the pale. But HBO made the decision to keep him on. He has great ratings. And ABC, despite Roseanne's great ratings, uh, gave her the can today. And but again, ABC it comes down to they a, were, a, a oh, business what, what, decision. I'm sorry, say that again, Lawrence? Charles, ABC knew what they were getting uh, when they first hired Roseanne. They got, look, look, look here, here's the audience to know. They played you guys. They saw an opening <laughs> in the Trump era, uh, and they felt like that they could have a show that talks about the forgot, forgotten man. And so this was a business decision. This was never about them caring about you or caring about your political right, philosophy. Right. They saw an opening, and they put her up Hold, there, and they uh, knew that she was a wild card. Let me bring up, let me, was Tam, a well, decision too. <clears throat> Tammy, uh, the political ramifications, because yeah. a lot of networks of tying the, these tweets, they've connected the right. dots back to uh, President Trump. Yeah, look, the, this conversation's important when it comes to what we stand for as individuals, right, and rejecting the notion of what, what she's been tweeting. At the same time, it's like a template has now unfolded where it all goes back to Trump. Uh, the fact is, of course, Roseanne Barr is Roseanne Barr. And if we really want to have a teachable moment, it's about what the individual and what they stand for and what they're doing, as opposed to the agenda of extending right. it out into the larger framework. Some, some people, I don't know Ms. Barr, but saying that uh, she perhaps now does not have liberal protection because she That's is right. a Trump supporter, uh, whereas before she did. Uh, I think that is irrelevant at this point as we look at how we move forward and, and what we accept uh, culturally at this stage. Quickly. Well, Charles, right. this, every, this, no, no one. Is off, yeah. No one is off limits, Charles. Remember when this Me True. Too movement yeah. first started? Everybody was after Fox News, and then everybody had to start cleaning their own house. So I would encourage people to not jump to the judgment right. so quickly because there will be more people uh, targeted as well. We have to leave it there. Thank you all very much.